everybody, my name is Kim and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks and I am here to bring you three for me, three fiction food books that I've read recently that I loved. One of my big goals for 2021 was to start to read more fiction. And if you've been watching my book hauls recently, I've been gathering more and more food fiction books. And some of them make their way into my monthly wrap ups, but I don't give them um, their own video. And that's what today is. These are three of my favorite foodie fiction books I've read so far. These are books that'll actually stay on my shelves and not get donated to the little free library. I'm gesturing because it's right outside this window. So first, which I read back at the end of May into, yeah, I think at the end of May, um, is Accidentally Engaged. This is by Farah Heron. It is a 2021 release, and this is All's Fair in Love and Baking. I really enjoyed this book. So Rena kind of knows exactly what she's doing when it comes to making bread, making sourdough. It's her happy place. But in the rest of her world, she doesn't really know what she's doing. She's been laid off from another job again, not because of her, but because of downsizing. Her family wants to get her engaged. Her family wants her to go into the family business and her family's always meddling. And now there's another potential good Muslim husband and his name is Nadim. And ironically, Rina and Nadim actually get along really well. But Rena doesn't want to be engaged because that's what her parents want from her, except that the sexual tension, the sparks between these two, it's so apparent. Um, they drunkenly one night film an entry video for a show that's kind of like Chopped, um, kind of like the next Food Network star, but for couples. And they check that diversity button, baby. And they make it really far, even though they drunkenly film the first video. So now they're pretending to be engaged to get through the competition, but not telling her parents that they're fake engaged because their parents want them to be real engaged and Rena doesn't want to give them that. It is really fun. I listened to this and I thought the voices were really, like the voice acting was really good. And I loved that it was about, you know, Indian food. It was about a different type of food, um, chutneys, curries. And also the what food does for memories. Nadim was raised in London. He's now in the States. He misses his home. He doesn't know how to cook. And that's why he's partially drawn to Rena and her food. I thought this was charming. This is an adult romance book. I wouldn't say it's a contemporary romance. I wouldn't say the, the smut was anything like you got to bathe yourself in holy water. I thought it was just enough. But it was also nice to read about adults. Um, some of the foodie fiction I've been reading is young adult. This felt very real. I know what it's like to be laid off. I know what it's like to have your side project and want your side project to be your full project, family tensions. I really enjoyed it. I am super excited for her next book. I hope she writes more about food in general. So next I read, I'm a little bit late to the game, but I read With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This, I found it at Open Books. Um, hardcover for like $7. And I immediately pounced on it because I've heard such good things. I also think the cover is quite beautiful. I love when food is drawn really well. So this, Elizabeth Acevedo is known for the Poet X and other great works. This is written in prose and comes from Harper Teen. This I also listened to as an audiobook because Elizabeth Acevedo narrates it herself. I've said this before, but if a narrator if an author narrates her own, his or her own book, I'm their own book, I'm usually more drawn to listen to it, especially because this is written as prose. So Imani um, had a teenage pregnancy, has kept her daughter, and is very proud of her daughter and isn't trying to hide it, but she is trying to figure out what she needs to do with her life. And she's got a lot of tough decisions. Um, she lives with her abuela. Her father uh, lives in Puerto Rico and is sort of in the picture, but not consistently the way she wants. And she, the one place she's happy is in the kitchen. And she knows the responsible part of her brain is telling her, get through school and go get a job. But she's a senior. People are asking her what she wants to do for college. And then this culinary program opens up in high school. And while the responsible part of her brain says not to do it, part of her just can't turn away. And she loves cooking, but she's very, um, 
not catharsis, kinetic, uh, works with her hands. And it's about her learning to let go of control, learning to take critique. It's um, for a high schooler, or that sounds rude, but she's very mature for her age. She's obviously had to be. She became a mother at such a young age, but I found the writing very powerful. It The imagery in there is wonderful. I loved knowing... Acevedo does a really good job of defining spaces and what the culinary classroom meant and the emotion it brought, even the coldness there, or Abuela and her house and the warmth that was there instead. I thought this was phenomenal. I hope she writes more books um, in this, more in this area. I just love food books, okay? I do believe that she has sold the rights for her first adult contemporary, so I will keep an eye out for her as well. And finally, I have another um, young adult book that I got from a, I got it from my bachelorette party and my little sister gave this one to me. This is I Love You So Mochi by Sarah Kuhn. So I've had this on my shelves for nearly a year and I got it off. Look at that, I finished it. Um, Kimi Nakamura, she has gotten into school to be an artist, like a painter, like her mother. And she kind of has her identity crisis senior year and realizes that's not exactly what she wants. And out of the blue, her estranged grandparents send her a ticket and say, come to Japan. And she takes off for spring break and there she goes. And when she's in Japan, she's uh, introduced to the food, but also the culinary traditions and customs there. Like, I didn't realize that you're not supposed to eat while walking. It's considered impolite. And she happened to grab food before meeting her grandparents and she was hungry and she was eating it while walking up to them. And she thought, she's like, why are people looking at me funny? And her parents, her grandparents have to explain to her that it's considered impolite. Um, so I enjoyed the humor in that. I enjoyed her exploring and discovering new foods. I also love that Mochi is a pivotal part of the story because her love interest um, in Kyoto, Akira, works at her, his grandfather's mochi stand. And I, I love it. Dan and I were supposed to go to Japan for our honeymoon. We still plan on going. It's just by then it'll be our second wedding anniversary. Um, so part of it is I got to live vicariously through Kimi-chan, which Kimi... Him. I mean, it's great. Um, it was a lot of fun and it really makes me excited to go. It always, every time I get to experience somebody else's sense of wonder when exploring Japan, I am super excited. I love that she's really passionate about fashion. Not because I'm passionate about fa fashion, but when I get characters who are really excited by the arts or, um, yeah, like the arts creativity, I feel like that really permeates on the page. I really understood some of her emotions, her ups and downs. I knew what I wanted to do when I went to college, but I got into school to be a veterinarian and then found out I was allergic to animals and then didn't want to put myself through 12 years of schooling to potentially not be able to operate on animals. I thought that was too big of a risk. So talk about an identity change. I really, really, uh, the former Kim or the younger Kim really was in this book with Kimi John as well. So those are my three, for me, three foodie fiction books that I've enjoyed reading this year. I will probably do another check-in at the end of summer because I have been reading other food books. Some I've loved, some have not been as well loved and have already made their way to the Little Free Library, but it is a fun experience. I am excited that I'm reading more fiction. Let me know in the comments below if there's more foodie books I should be reading. I have tons on my shelves next to me, like Rosaline Palmer Takes the Cake, the Joy Luck Club, Natalie Tan's Book of Luck and Fortune, Tweet Cute, A Faux Love Story, The Kitchen Front. I'm super excited to read more, but I'd love to hear more suggestions below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you're looking for ways to support this channel, you can either join my Patreon below or you can use my affiliate link at bookshop.org if you want to buy any of these titles because they think they interest you. Not only will I receive a commission, but you also, a portion of your proceeds will be supporting independent bookstores throughout the United States. I hope you're well and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.